Welcome to Recurring Insight. It's the beginning of your upkeep, so it's time for another episode. I'm your host, Michael. Today, we'll be looking at three Rakdos decks. Filter Anya by Blazing Scout, Dockside Doom Round by Don Khan Senpai, and Seared Sausage by The Mormonator. However, before we do that, I do have an announcement. This channel is going to be changed to your CEDH. I'll be branching out from the deck breakdowns to also make topical and gameplay videos. I'll be making the changes to the channel a few days after I publish this video. To start, let's look at the commanders. Anya lets you see an insane amount of cards with a high enough density of cards with madness. Grenzo lets you cheat out low power creatures. This leads to both of them being highly proactive. Kroxa, however, causes your opponents to discard on ETB. This leads it to be a more stacks heavy deck. Now let's dive into the combos. The most famous combo is the World Gorger combo, which infinitely flickers your permanents. While Anya and Crooks are on this combo, Grenzo doesn't. Even though Grenzo is an infinite mana outlet, it has synergy with less risky combos. Speaking of which, both Grenzo and Anya run Curious Dockside. This provides infinite mana and lets you continuously bounce Anya. Anya also runs the Underworld Breach combo. The combo is very powerful, but it loses a lot of consistency without blue and white, as you no longer have access to Brain Freeze, Intuition, or Savine's Reclamation. Grenzo and Croxa run Breach because it's a good card, but they don't run the combo. However, Ani does a good job of filling up the graveyard and seeing a lot of cards, so it can afford to run it. These next three combos are only run in Grenzo. Kikijuki and Zealous Conscripts are an established combo, but Grenzo does need to have a plus one plus one counter to assemble it. It also runs Dualcaster Mage, which creates infinite hasty tutus with Twin Flame or Heat Shimmer. Finally, there's the Murderous Redcap combo. This combo requires three cards, but Grenzo is on Doomsday to help assemble it. The decks are Sans Blue, which typically means that they run a lot more removal to compensate for the lack of stack interaction, but these decks are also proactive, so they're going to run even less removal. Ane looks like it's the exception to the rule, but most of the removal only makes it in because it has madness. I am surprised at the lack of artifact removal considering that Cursed Totem shuts Anya down. Looking at Grenzo, Abrade is versatile, and Fire Covenant and Shattering Spree are flexible. Lightning Bolt is an unexpected choice, but it is cheap removal. There really isn't much incentive to not run Shatter Skull Smashing. Kroxa runs a bit more removal, including Toxic Deluge, since it's not counting on keeping the commander on the field. I prefer Shattering Spree to Buy Force, since it's 1 mana less even though you can only use red mana. Since Crooks is a slower deck, it makes sense that it may need to deal with enchantments, hence the inclusion of Chaos Warp, however, I believe Feed the Swarm would be a better fit. The stack interaction is predictably sparse, but they make do with what they have. The best ones are Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast, which are run in all three decks. Crooks is the only one running Burnout, which is a much worse Pyroblast. It doesn't, however, run Deflecting Swat, as Crooks doesn't rely on being on the field. It's interesting that Grenzo doesn't run Imp's Mischief like the other two decks, because it's a good protection spell considering what's available. Anya runs Muckdrub because it has madness and can protect Anya from removal. Kroxa runs Withering Boon, which is a cool stacks piece that I haven't seen before. Moving on to the card draw, the only spell run in all the decks is Wheel of Fortune. Anya runs a very small amount of card draw because the commander is a draw engine. Anya's Ravager and Stromkirk Occultist mostly make the cut because they have madness. Bag of Holding has great synergy with Anya. I'm not sure how I feel about Merchant of the Veil, vale, as Faithless Looting just seems better. However, it does serve as a mana sink even if it is inefficient. Anya doesn't run Ad Nauseam, which is shocking. Anya does have a CMC of 2.18 and runs Ulamog, so it won't be as effective, but it's still incredibly powerful. It does make sense to cut Necro, considering the discard synergies. Moving on to Grenzo, there's more traditional card draw, like Ad Nauz, Bob, and Necro. Jessica's Will is a great card, and I'm sure it'd make it into Anya after being updated for Commander Legends. Grenzo is proactive and has a good amount of rituals, so it makes sense to run Pure into the Abyss. There's no incentive to not run Valakut Awakening, and Wheel of Misfortune is a good card. Not great, but good. I am surprised at the relative lack of card draw. Kroxa is more what I expected. It runs the traditional card draw, as well as Burning Inquiry, Dark Deal, and Wids of Change for Hand Disruption. Geth's Grimoire lets you take advantage of your opponent's discarding cards. Mindblade Render and Azra Oddsmaker provide repeatable card draw, while the bottom four are good niche card draw. Proactive black decks really shine when it comes to tutors. They all run the three best tutors, and Tomb is an all-star and Gamble's downsides are mitigated by the reanimation plan. Tainted Pact is niche outside of Thoracle, and actually one of Croaks' backup plans is just reanimating Thoracle and using Tainted Pact. Anyways, 
Grenzo and Aine both have enough backup combos that Tainted Pact is unlikely to lock them out of the game. Since Crocus is a hard outlet, as long as you don't exile all of your reanimation enchantments and the World Gorger Dragon, you're good. Because Crocus is a hard outlet, it can afford to run Demonic Consultation and plunge into darkness. Mausoleum Secrets is worth running because the deck is fine with Crocsa being in the graveyard. It is strange that Crocsa doesn't run Wishclaw Talisman because it makes the cut in Anya and Grenzo. Grenzo doesn't have an engine like Anya in the command zone and doesn't have the stacks pieces like Crocsa to slow the game down, so it runs a higher density of tutors. The most iconic is Doomsday, as Grenzo can crack the pile. Dark Petition lets you grab and cast Doomsday if you have spell mastery. It also runs more common niche tutors, like Diabolic Intent and Wishclaw Talisman, and the less common niche tutors, like Grim Tutor and Praetor's Grasp. Goblin Engineer is a little unexpected, but it can grab Cloudstone Curio. The stacks is dominated by Kroxa. The only two stacks pieces in Anya are suboptimal, only making a cut because they have madness. Grenzo runs Defense Grid to protect its combos, and Opposition Agent because it's broken. I'm positive that Anya and Kroxa would also run Opposition Agent if they'd been updated for Commander Legends. Kroxa has a much more extensive stack suite. Blood Moon and Magus the Moon can completely shut down 3 plus color decks. Chains and Oppression both do a good job of keeping your opponent's hands under control. Kroxa can safely run Cursed Totem, and Leyline of the Void is one sided graveyard hate even if it is at a high CMC. Stranglehold stops tutors, but again, Opposition Agent would be better in this slot. The Tabernacle can really hinder green and other creature-reliant decks. The decks predictably have a good recursion suite. Anya and Kroxa all run the best three reanimation enchantments as they're part of the World Gorger combo. Anya adds to the package with two Madness cards. It also runs Shadow of the Grave, which lets you recur a bunch of Madness cards. Grenzo doesn't run the World Gorger combo, so it doesn't need the reanimation enchantments, and can instead run the cheaper Reanimate. Corpse Dance is an interesting choice as it is a little expensive and the creature is exiled at the beginning of your next end step. However, it is repeatable and there's a line with Corpse Dance, Skirt Prospector, and Oxide Extortionist to generate infinite mana. The decks are proactive, so the ramp package is going to be extensive. They run all the best rocks, rituals, and Dockside. Yeah, so I know I said that the ramp package would be extensive, but it's not so much for Anya. The deck really only needs to hit 3 mana to cast Anya and is aiming for a turn 2 Anya, so the ramp is all 1 or less mana. Grenzo is what I was expecting. It takes a decent amount of mana to cast Doomsday and then combo off. It runs the 2, 1, and 0 CMC rocks. Springleaf Drum and Mox Amber are pretty reliable, as Grenzo is only 2 mana. Seething Song is rarely seen, but there is a line with Reiterate and Bonus Round. Still not a fan of it though. Priest of Urobrask is mana positive if you cheat it out with Grenzo, so it makes it into some Doomsday piles and Skirk Prospector is part of the murderous red cap combo. Crocus's ramp is less extensive but still present. There's not much to say about it except for Skirk Prospector and Waste Knot. Skirk Prospector isn't part of a combo, instead serving as a second blood pet, and Waste Knot has discard synergies. Finally, we have the miscellaneous cards that don't fit into one of the other categories. For Anya, we have 21 madness cards. I'm not going to go through them all because there's a lot of them, most of them have little use besides serving as discard fodder, and I don't want to. The other one is Ulamog, which serves as part of a finisher. It lets you repeatedly cast a spell in case you don't have an infinite mana outlet available. Grenzo runs Bonus Round and Reiterate. They do combo with Seething Song, but they have their own uses as well. Bonus Round makes tutors do double duty, and Reiterate can serve as an anti counter spell. It also runs two discard spells to help make sure it's safe to combo off. I'm not a fan of Bonus Round and Reiterate, as I don't feel that they are good enough in their slots to make it in, and the fact that they have a Seething Song line isn't enough because the line is very lackluster. Kroxa prefers Fork as an anti counter spell, as it's one mana cheaper. It then runs five discard spells to keep your opponent's hands under control. Now that we've looked at the cards in each deck, let's see a general overview. The decks are lacking in interaction, which is to be expected from Rakdos. The card draw was minimal for Anya and Grenzo, but Anya lets you see an insane amount of cards and Grenzo compensates with tutors. The stacks is lackluster except for Kroxa, which is also to be expected from Rakdos. The recursion and ramp are both predictably good, except for Anya's sparse ramp. Now let's look at how they rate in the meta. Anya and Kroxa both provide more value than Grenzo outside of the combo turn. Kroxa hits your opponent's hands and Anya lets you see a lot of cards. For this reason, I'm putting Grenzo at 3rd. I would say Kroxa is better than Anya, as one of the biggest weaknesses of Rakdos is its glass cannon nature. However, Kroxa deals with this with stacks pieces and hitting your opponent's hands. I would, however, prefer it to have an additional combo. This isn't my opinion on the decklists, it's just how I think they would hold up in the current meta. 
And there we go. I personally enjoyed the Grenzel list the most. Let me know which one you preferred in the comments. Credit goes to Blazing Scout, Don Khan Senpai, and the Mormonator for the decks, and Scryfall for the image. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe, it really helps. I'm your host Michael, and I'll see you at the beginning of the next upkeep for another episode of your CEDH.